What do Meghan and Prince Harry get up to all day? After attending their second official engagement in two months in Brixton, we reveal the couple's daytime routine. They charmed the crowds in Brixton this week with their second official public engagement. But when not on royal duties, how do Prince Harry and Meghan Markle spend their days? With four months to go until the wedding, we reveal the couple's daytime routine, from exercise regimes to quality date nights and their favorite Italian restaurant. Eating out in trendy Soho. Meghan is an avid foodie and likes to dine at Bocca di Lupo, the chic Italian restaurant in Soho, London whose celebrity clientele includes actors James McAvoy and Ralph Fiennes. For flexitarian Meghan she sometimes follows the vegetarian diet. There are plenty of mouth-watering dishes, from truffled radish, celeriac and pomegranate salad 14 pounds to sea green carpaccio 18 pounds. She and Harry regularly return to Dean Street Townhouse, a Georgian-style venue owned by the Soho House Group of which the pair are VIP members where they had their first date. In the 20s, Fred Astaire, Noel Coward and Dylan Thomas were guests. Today, cocktails, among them a Soho Negronite, made from gin, martini and bitters, cost £11 apiece. A few doors down is Soho House, where Lola dining rooms, a private cinema and fireside snug offer a perfect retreat for the couple. They've also been seen at Little House, another private club in Mayfair, where Megan brunches on £11 avocado and poached eggs washed down with a 7 pounds and 50 pence glow juice, containing ginger, lime and guava. They share plates, says a member approvingly. The lighting's low and they don't get bothered. Yoga and jogging. Both Meghan and Harry are fit and athletic, and like to start the day with exercise. While Harry heads off to the KX Health Club in Chelsea, the gym that costs 575 pounds a month and whose members include actors Eddie Redmayne and Hugh Grant. Meghan prefers running six-mile circuits around Kensington Gardens twice or three times a week. Recently, she has confined her outings to Kensington Palace Green, where she is protected from sightseers by a newly planted screen of hedgerow. She's not thought to have a personal trainer and instead devotes her time to yoga, which she'd been practicing for several years. Her mother, Daria, worked as a yoga teacher. She's also a fan of workout DVDs, including Tracy Anderson's. The favorite of Winnet Paltrow and Kim Kardashian, and Pilots Platinum, an American cardio and strength workout which she credits for her toned limbs and taut ABS. Meghan has promised pal Millie McIntosh, the maiden Chelsea star and quality street heiress, she'll attend one of her SBC Skinny Bitch Collective sessions, the most exclusive fitness class on the planet. Invitation only, the classes are full of supermodels and a listers involve high-intensity animalistic exercises and cost about £40 a session. Beauty Rituals As she prepares for life as a princess, Meghan has been taking time out to pamper herself and ensure she looks her best for every public appearance. Royal sources say her dewy complexion is down to Sarah Chapman, who owns the skinny size clinic in Sloan Square, London, and counts actresses Naomi Watts, Ewan A. Thurman and supermodel Gigi Hadid and Jordan Dunn among her deputies. Sarah, whose hands are reportedly insured for £1 million, is a skin care supremo whose treatments include the £220 lead-like therapy facial and 60-minute skin resurfacing therapy for £450. There is reportedly a six-month waiting list for her services, but Megan, who swears by Sarah's £149 stem cell collagen activator duo and £44 ultimate cleanse, seems to have skipped the queue. She counts on Cheryl Riley of Nails and Brows Boutique in Mayfair for fortnightly manicures and pedicures from £41 each as well as the Audrey, the £48, 20-minute eyebrow shaping service, inspired by Audrey Hepburn, which promises to instantly lift the face. For more intensive treatments, Meghan visits Nicola Joss in Covent Garden, whose services include the £250 bespoke sculpting inner facial a bizarre procedure that involves massaging the inside of the mouth and cheeks. She was seen at the salon before Pippa Middleton's wedding last May. Cozy nights in. Removal vans have been spotted bringing Meghan's possessions to Nottingham Cottage, the quaint two-bedroom home in the grounds of Kensington Palace, which she moved into last November. Harry has lived here since 2013, and Meghan is believed to have transformed not caught from bachelor pad to elegant marital home. Gone is Harry's messy living room and the hammock strung between two trees in the garden. Instead, 
Megan has filled the interiors with soft cashmere throats, dipped decay candles, white wooden furniture, bases of peonies and beach prints by Gray Mallon, her favorite photographer. Having spent much of the past 18 months apart, she and Harry love nights in, cooking together. Sources say Harry likes fish pie and beef wellington, while Megan's tastes extend to spicy fish and Caribbean jerk chicken, and relaxing over a glass of a heap pounds Italian tignanello red wine. They regularly watch box sets on Netflix, and sources say they've recently enjoyed BBC shows Feud, Spiral and McMafia. A Palace Insider says, they're spending as much time as they can on their own together, with lots of casual suppers and TV. Supper with Pals Twice a week, the sociable pair can be found at friends' houses in West London, catching up over dinner. Pals include Hugh Bankutsam and his wife Rose Astor. Tom and Lara Inskip whose Jamaican wedding they attended last year and Mark Dyer, often dunned Harry's mentor, whose Texan wife Amanda Klein is said to have particularly taken to Megan and in whose Fulham Gastro Pub, the Sands and the pair enjoyed secret dates. Megan is building her own network of glamorous, well, connected British women. She enjoys Sunday lunches with Tanya Bird, a 28-year-old beauty blogger and YouTube star, whom she met at Wimbledon last year and bike rides with Millie McIntosh, also 28. Other new friends include blonde socialite and stylist Olivia Buckingham, PR guru Violet Von Westenholtz rumored to have introduced Meghan to her prince and Vanessa Zurab, the self-titled queen of Soho and group membership director of Soho House, with whom Meghan has a matching friendship bracelet. Who's on the list? Unlike William's wedding, which was a female state affair, Harry and Meghan want to have complete control of the guest list which is one reason they chose the comparatively small St. George's Chapel, Windsor. Below stairs staff say Frogmore House in Windsor Great Park is emerging as a possible location for the reception. Frogmore is a favorite of Prince Philip, who often holds Christmas parties there. Queen of Shopping Meghan has taken to shopping on the upmark of King's Road in Chelsea. Before Christmas, she was spotted nipping into Smart Beachwear store Heidi Klein, suggesting a pre-wedding holiday perhaps, and skincare savior Sarah Chapman. This month, she'd been seen in Lou Woolman, a Canadian sportswear shop that sells 88 pounds leggings and 48 pounds yoga mats, and outside Royal Warrant Holder and Grocer cartridges, which stocks a range of U.S. foodstuffs. Megan shops alone or with one of her both aides, either one, Harry's new assistant private secretary, or projects manager Clara Madden. And when she's not on the King's Road, there are plenty of options on the couple's doorstep. Whole Foods, the U.S. Grocer and Organic Food Shop, is their weekly supermarket of choice. They've also been seen popping into the basement food hall of nearby M&S, while Megan replenishes the peonies around the house from Kensington Flower Corner, an independent florist with a stall on the corner of the high street. Getting Round Town one way to keep the paparazzi at bay is an ever-changing fleet of cars. One day it's Harry's sporty Audi R6, the next the people carrier with black-out windows. Megan has been seen behind the wheel of a blue VW Golf and has been driven in a polo. And sometimes they'll grab a taxi. The posh blow dry. Megan has struck up an unlikely friendship with Spice Girl turned fashion designer Victoria Beckham whose 500-pounds cashmere jumper she chose for her engagement shoot last month. The pair were reported to have met last summer and have stayed in regular contact via texts, with Victoria, 43, providing Megan with a list of exclusive salons to visit for hair, makeup and beauty treatments in the UK. On previous trips, Megan had her hair blow-dried at Charles Worthington in Covent Garden, but is now thought to have moved to her chaisons in Knightsbridge. Weekend Retreats the couple prefer quiet relaxation to wild weekends, and tend to retreat to the countryside on a Friday night, often the Coxwolds. They've visited Soho Farmhouse, the rural outpost of the members' club, at least twice together, and in October 2016 Megan enjoyed a solo trip to the Swanky Sanctuary, where she stayed in a pounds 258 night cabin set amid 100 acres of peaceful countryside. They regularly visit High Grove. Prince Charles's Gloucestershire estate, where Meghan is said to have bonded well with Camilla, and at Nanger Hall, where they stayed with William and Kate at Christmas. Sources say they're also planning the weekend to Crip Howell in South Wales, where Tiggy Leg Bork, 
Harry's former nanny, has a picture of the B. The weekends also serve as useful scouting sessions. Palace insiders say Meghan and Harry are searching for a home outside London, probably in the Coxwolds. Royals, however, rarely buy their own homes. The Queen provided an Amber Hall for William and Kate, and Charles's Duchy of Cornwall estate owns several properties he could make available to his son. Dog lives in luxury. Dog lover Megan was deeply disappointed to learn that she had to leave Bogart, a Labrador Shepherd mix and one of her beloved rescue dogs, behind in Canada, as he was too old to make the trip to Britain. He's now being looked after by some of her friends. Her beagle, Guy, however, Megan's second dog, was blown over in November and has settled in well at Nottingham Cottage. On weekends when they're in London, the pair can be seen taking Guy, who has his own union flag coat and only eats organic food, for walks in the palace grounds. Then they fancy a change of scenery. There's also Battersea Park, where they were spotted buying a 65 pounds Christmas tree and given free mistletoe in December. According to reports, Guy broke two legs last month, but is now said to be on the men and eager for what he's to resume. Market for Prince On her now deleted Instagram account, Meghan posted photos of trips to Portobello Road in West London where she loves the bohemian atmosphere and quirky items for sale. She's believed to have dragged Harry to browse antiques and vintage crockery at the Saturday market a few times. Her house in Toronto had an antique French mirror and a battered suitcase reinvented as a coffee table, a shabby chic theme she is said to be replicating at Nottingham Cottage. It seems antique hunting is in Meghan's blood. Her maternal grandfather, Alvin was an antiques dealer in L.A. and passed his love of collectibles on to his granddaughter. Sneaky film nights The couple are avid theater fans and have enjoyed several days in London's West End to see The Lion King musical and the curious incident of the dog in the night, time. All in black and wearing beanie hats, they also enjoy regular cinema dates, slipping in unnoticed to screenings around Chelsea. What about babies? Aides insist the couple will stay at Nottingham Cottage for the foreseeable future, but palace officials have begun inquiries to identify a suitable royal apartment for when they start the family. One possibility is moving back to St. James's Palace, where Harry and William lived with Charles after Diana's death. Another includes the swanky home at Kensington Palace, currently occupied by the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, once they retired from royal duties.